scenes at the Muppet Show. My name is Jim Henson, and I've been doing the Muppets for over 25 years. And actually, I've been working Kermit the Frog for almost that long. Well, well, did you know, Fonzie, that wherever the Muppet Show is screened outside of England and America, the bear speaks the language of that country? You mean I do? I, I speak the language of that country? Well, you don't. Uh, not exactly. Well, I, see, there's another, another, well, there's another bear that speaks for you. Another bear speaks for me? <laughs> well, so to speak, yes. Uh, he's not as funny as I am, huh? Well, sometimes he's funnier. <laughs> he's funnier? The Muppet Show is now seen in over 100 countries, and I'm just delighted with the show's success. Because until this program came along, no one had ever done a show quite like this, where the real stars are puppets. Hey, Kermit, me and the band gonna play at the wedding? <laughs> what wedding? Well, I just heard the news that you and Miss Fatback was gonna tie the knot and raise chitlins. <laughs> Biggie, um, uh, uh, Kermit. Just a joke. A joke? Well, people would think we're really engaged. <laughs> oh, oh, it's so sweet sounding when you say it. <laughs> well, the engagement is off. <laughs> Come here, dear, dear sweetheart. It's not like that. It's like this. <laughs> well, Kermit's function on this show is very much like my own in that. Uh, he's trying to hold together this group of crazies. And that's not unlike what I do. We are trying to put on a classy show here. You can't treat me like that. I'll stick my pet barracuda on you. Get her, Kevin. Okay, vet's hospital on stage in one minute. The red and suet snout. Kermit, is it always like this on this show? Oh, how do you mean? Well, all this craziness. Oh, well, this is actually a rather quiet show for us. No unforeseen disasters so far. Hurry up, guys! Okay, all right, all right, all right. All right. All right. Unforeseen disasters? Uh, uh, well, that's a disaster we knew about all along. <laughs> Frank Oz joined me about 18 years ago. So I think I've often credited him with being one of the real reasons that the Muppet Show is funny. And of course, most people know him on the show as the man behind this piggy. Is the pig ready? The pig takes twice as long as the guest stars. <laughs> okay. The sofa goes across. All right? Yeah. Hi, Frank. The necessity of uh, doing a shot like this, you have to... Uh, you have to... Uh, in order to make it look good up there, it has to be uncomfortable down here. Oh, yes, it, Roger. Roger, I'm so glad you asked me up here. Well, actually, I didn't ask you. Oh, well, Roger, mon amour, you know we are meant to be, vous et moi? Vous et moi, nous? Huh? Oh, Roger! Out on the briny, oh, Roger, with the moon, big and shiny. But I'm not green, I don't have flippers. Melting your heart of stone. Here we go. Five, six, seven. I love to get you. Well, when you consider you do a whole bunch of characters, and uh, you can walk down the street and nobody will know you're those characters. It's a very good thing, because you can go in and buy a can of beans at the supermarket, and no one's going to bother you. On the other hand, when you want someone to bother you while you're buying a can of beans, <laughs> yes, yes. <laughs> it gets very depressing. So you, ha you have to, it depends how you feel, how you wake up in the morning. You know, she gets quite embarrassed about this. Yeah, lady. Piggy's become a phenomenon in the last few years, and I think when we introduced her, we had no idea she would take off like she has. The media has taken her and made a big thing of her. It's, it's a personality that Frank Oz has created, that people somehow, uh, everybody identifies with and either loves or hates. Andrew, come and I, we are engaged. No! Yes! Yes, it, it, it just happened. Can I make the announcement? No! No! Um, only you and I know. And Kermit. Who? Oh, yes, yes, uh, Kermit, yes, yes. The frog and the pig getting uh, married. Yes. Soon there'll be the patter of tiny figs. <laughs> <laughs>
listen, Kermit, you're a nice little dude in your own amphibian way, but I just can't take it anymore. But what's the matter? It's the theme song. The theme? Kermit, you are talking to Floyd Pepper, the hippest of the hip. I mean, I have a room for life at the home for the chronically groovy. <laughs> and every week I have to come in here and play dun 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 Richard Hunt came to us right out of high school, I think, and started working in small ways and slowly built up to where he's doing major characters. Uh, when I came into the thing, I was 18, and I was uh, really energetic, and, uh, you know, I'd say, yeah, sure, everything you want to do, boss, no problem. I talked a lot like him, because he's my voice when I was younger, like this. Hi, are you Kermit the Frog? Uh, yeah. Oh, uh, I'm Scooter. Cute. Cute name. I'm your new gopher. Gopher? Uh, no, no, we have frogs and pigs and chickens around here, but we've never had a gopher. Matter of fact, you don't even look like a gopher. <laughs> yeah, well, you don't understand. You see, I'm your new gopher. Yeah, I'll go for coffee, I'll go for sandwiches, I'll go for anything you need. <laughs> yeah, well, I work real cheap, and I got plenty of ideas for your theater, and I'll mm. start tonight, okay? Uh, let's, listen, kid, I'm sorry, but uh, you're too young, you don't have any experience, and I don't have any money for it in the budget. Yeah, well, my uncle owns this theater. Uh, you start today, get me a cup of coffee, your salary is 20 a week. David Coles was an industrial designer before he joined the Muppets, and he was designing computer consoles, and somehow he became attracted to our work, and so he joined our shop as a puppet builder and started performing and gradually worked long until now he's one of our star puppeteers. Say, howdy. What do you say? Say, what's happening? Hi. Good evening, ladies and gentlemen. This evening, I will perform a feat of lunatic daring. Before your very eyes, I will ride this motorcycle up this ramp and jump directly into that box, landing safely between those two elderly gentlemen. What? Oh, I can assure you, you'll be in no danger. You're right. We'll be in Chicago. <laughs> For their own safety, uh, while they were dozing, I took the precaution of chaining them to their chairs. What? <laughs> On my mark. Steve Whitmire had his own television show in Atlanta as a young puppeteer, and my wife was down there and saw that and invited him to come up to talk to us about joining our group. Kathy Mullen joined us just before uh, we did the Muppet movie, and she worked on that and then came over here. She has a background in children's theater. Louise Gold is our English performer, and she does a character known as Annie Sue Pig, who's been Miss Piggy's rival in a few of the shows. Louise is a great singer and does a lot of our best musical numbers. If I saw a tub, but I don't think I'd disturb it. I wouldn't want to trifle with a trout. A flounder is a flounder, a shad is a cat, and the red snapper's definitely out. David Laser is our executive producer, and one of the things he does is guide the guest stars through their week in our rather unconventional world here. He also supervises the whole business area. The guest stars are a vital part of our show. They add a new texture each week, a new motivation for us, for the writers, for the performers, and a lot of fun to work with. A lot of fun. Look at this. We have five years here. Working with 120 guest stars has been a fantastic experience for all of us. We've worked with the greats of showbiz. We've worked with all our heroes. It's fun, and that sense of fun I think permeates the show. If you wanna be the top notch banana, you gotta start from the bottom of the bunch. You gotta know the joke about the farmer's diet. Then take it in the kisser with the solo water. I believe this program is trivial and and not fit for family viewing. You're a comic genius. Oh, uh, thank you, Gonzo. I love doing this show. Yeah, if your nose weren't so small, you'd probably be a big star like me. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Love the Knicks. <laughs>
thing I must do, Link, is to test out the elasticity of the tendons in the leg areas. Oh, Now, Link, I'm going to try both of them. Oh, is that? You can feel that? Oh, yeah. It's doing a good, Link? Oh, yeah. <laughs> yourself. The white eternal light is penetrating your temple, going down through your body and coming out your toes. You relaxed? Does he love me? I want to know. How can I tell if he loves me so? where the puppets are created, uh, where they're costumed, where we build a lot of the props. <coughs> Very often we'll throw something at these builders just at the last minute and they've got to come up with some sort of solution. <coughs> My early thought was that they would be all cute and cuddly and have evil eyes. But as I look at those guys, I think that maybe it makes them too evil and it might be more fun to have them like the pink rabbit there because that looks great fun and knowing mm -hmm. that that's a spy. Mm -hmm. It makes them more real when they seem to really be looking at Yeah. I made a, a fake so hand like okay, this yeah. that you could reach up so with and go up. like that. And I hopefully if your hand's in there, you can keep that's it from great. jerking. <laughs> Trade a thought or two in language that I think they'll comprehend. And to the music of Scalati, some judo and karate, I'll prove I'm strong enough to make them there. Communication, all we need. Then they'll understand things can always end up peaceful. And I've explained to the animals, brained all animals, thought and taught and brained all the animals. We have a group of puppets called Whatnots. They're basically featureless characters with just blank heads in several different shapes and, and sizes. And then we have a whole bunch of features that we can attach with tape or pins. We have a whole lot of eyes and ears, noses, uh, different wigs, and that sort of thing. And we can put them on and change their personality completely. We can make almost any kind of character you can think of. I feel charming, oh so charming, it's alarming how charming I feel, and so pretty, that I hardly can believe I'm real. See the pretty girl in that mirror there, what mirror where, who can that attract a girl be, which one where who? One thing about being a puppeteer is it really takes a long time to learn how to do it. And people who join us, you usually have to work for about a year before the puppetry gets sort of good enough to be able to handle major parts. There's a whole lot of mechanics to it all. You know, just the idea of you have to learn how to put all of your performance into this hand. And, and just the mechanics of doing the lip sync, you know. Is, uh, it takes a long time before that's totally automatic. And it has to be totally automatic 
before you can relax into a performance. I got the horse right here. His name is Paul Revere. And here's a guy who says if the weather's clear, can do, can do. This guy says the horse can do. I got a horse right here. Horse belongs to Guinevere. And I say this horse can do, can do, can do. <laughs> Anything you can do, I can do better. I can do anything better than you. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, I can. No, you can't. Yes, you can. Yes, you can. A boy like that could kill your brother. Forget that boy and find another. One, One of your, your own kind. Stick to your own kind. Leather. Soft, supple leather. Time was when an all-leather handcrafted shoe was all a man could want. Still is, if he can afford it. And now he can. Now Kinney brings you soft, supple leather. Luke Skywalker in C-3PO. And R2-D2 from Star Wars. Excuse me, Master Luke, but what is this strange world we come to? Beats me, 3PO. Seems we've landed on some sort of comedy variety show planet. stages. The first day is the script read through and music rehearsals for vocals. And then the next day we record the band and then the vocals are laid down. Then we're in the studio rehearsing and videotaping the action. Each show presents different problems. We used a Viking village background for In the Navy. It's another one of our epics. and the sheep and so forth just, responding just, and they're saying come on protect our motherland uh, just we we'll get any additional information yes. here okay add a add an extra in the oh, navy after can't you see we need a hand much more quasi horns bar five brassy, brassy. the vikings coming in <laughs> Absolutely indispensable person. 
He's our link between all of us in front of the camera and the director up in the control booth. I'm sorry, Frank, we have two television directors for the show, Philip Casson and Peter Harris, and they alternate, one doing one week and one doing the next. And they control what is actually being videotaped and transmitted. They get to see the whole shape of the show, and they do all the things that most television directors do, plus dealing with the unique problems that we have in creating our own illusions. In the Navy, in the Navy, cut. Right, okay. I, mean, I would like to now see you all starting to march back towards the boat. Yes, frankly. So it's a shot over boat. <laughs> Our entire reality is on the screen. You are performing, and at the same time, you're seeing your performance exactly like the audience does. But until we had television puppetry, it wasn't possible. You'll notice when we're working out on the floor, we have monitors all around the place. Because everybody has to see a monitor. Stop, please. What? I'm sorry. Stevie went too high. So, under, to take two. so underneath everything, hands the lot. The whole problem relates to the fact that the puppet is only from the waist up and that there's a large puppeteer, you know, right below. So what we've got to shoot with, we can only shoot from the top of our heads up to the hand. I mean, this, this is a span of about 18 inches. We want you. 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 We want uh, we're getting more elaborate these days, and, which is more fun. And uh, some of the production numbers that we're doing now take a long time. We spent all day on the Viking number. And uh, we really don't have time to spend all day on the Viking number. It's a good number, and it'll be a lot of fun. But when you're spending about three days to do a show, you really don't have one day to spend on just a two-and-a-half-minute piece. We got you. We got you as a new Okay, 
Okay, okay, I got it now. <laughs> All right, listen. <laughs> uh, Chucky, <laughs> who was that lady I saw you with last night?
it should definitely fireflies. be night. Yeah, it's moonlight, fireflies. Hey, Ray, do you have a copy of uh, Blue Bayou? Yes, and I would do. Would you like to put it on? Of course. Because it would just help. Render that's dead. But I would I see her so bad, I got a in a light colored dress. And she's, you know, put on the next, uh, you know, next to the swamp. Mm. And we had lily pads, and we got cypress and moonlight. Mm -hmm. That sort of thing. And cameras traveling around through the stuff. Yeah. Or maybe an actor wants to do a comedy thing. 
and we're famous for that. We, we'll take them, and if they want to get outrageous, we'll go right along with it. Jazz musicians exactly. in New York, they see another thing in the show. Yep. They're seeing, the, they're all watching the same program and they're coming away with, with different things. Yep. And that's something that I, uh, I certainly would think has happened unconsciously on our part. You know, again, we just do a show that seems to entertain ourselves. For whatever reason the show works, it's done by a group of people who genuinely like each other and enjoy what they do. And what we've done for the last five years is a show that's seen and enjoyed by people all over the world. Listen, Fozzie, don't be discouraged. Even if you don't make a lot of money, you're doing what you love to do. Just look around you. The costumes, the scenery, the makeup, the props. Okay, we have a, we have a fighting... There's no people like show people. And they are low. Yesterday they told you you would not go far. That night you open. Stand by. And there you are. Yes. Next day on your dressing room, they've hung a star. 